morning, good afternoon everybody. Welcome back to another video. Um, in this video we are going to be talking about saddling and everything there is to know about saddling. Um, we're gonna talk about parts of the saddle, um, the two different saddle types that we have here. We're also gonna talk about how to saddle, the reins, the halter, and um, the different types of headpieces that we use on horses and how to secure a horse. So I have my friend Dave here and, and we also have our friend Espresso here and we will get started. Alright, so here we mainly ride western, so this is our western saddle, and then this is one that we don't teach here, but it's an English saddle. It's better for teaching you ballots. But so we're going to go over the parts of our western saddle. So on our western saddle, we have just, we have the normal horn, and we have our pommel, and then underneath the horn and the pommel is called the bullet, and that's how you size it perfectly with the horse's withers. Um, this is the seat, so you're sitting here, this is the cantle, and then this is our front jockey, back jockey, the bottom part is the skirt of it, these little button things are called conchos, this is a cinch strap, this is how you tie um, your girth, this is the fender, and the stirrup and then this is our girth which we use the sit strap to tie the girth so the girth will go under their barrel and then not all of our saddles have these but this is a breastplate and it's mainly for our horses who have bigger chests so it keeps the saddle on them and it keeps it from sliding back and it goes it hooks right here and in the middle of the girth on the reins. This is a saddle pad. So I'm going to bring it over here to my friend. We always saddle on the left side of the horse. I'm sorry. <laughs> and so we line up with the withers. We put it on. And then we kind of look for it and we make sure that it's over this, uh, over their shoulder part. So then we make sure that it's all even. We go behind the horse. Check them, see if it's right, it's a little off. And then once you get the saddle pad on, thank you, buddy. Come on. Thank you. You grab the saddle. When you're grabbing the saddle, it's not it's easier if you put all the girth, the, the chest plate, and this stir up over that way everything's out of your way hold it like this one hand on the um cantle and the other hand on the uh, oh, wow. bullet sorry and then you basically throw it on up don't actually throw it though you get it sitting perfectly you go on the other side Fix the skirt. Never want that to happen. You always want to make it sure that everything is like all set. There's no bumps. Bumps can lead to bruises on the horse, and we don't want bruises on the horse. So you take this down. Then you take the uh, the girth down. You set the girth down because you don't want the metal to hit the legs. I'm gonna bring this a little over. Now we're gonna go back onto the other side. Remember, when you're walking around the horse, you're either six feet away from the butt or you have your hand on the horse's butt because that means that they know that you're there. So we're going to throw this on the horn. We're going to undo this. This is the cinch, the cinch strap. We're going to grab our girth here. Now, we bring this around as many times as we can because this is to keep the saddle on the horse's back and not on its belly because <laughs> you don't want that. So you have to have at least two loops, but if you can get a third one in, that's good too. So now 
if my friend Amanda will come a little bit closer, I'll show you guys how to do our tie. You put this through, you make a seven. You make a four, and you slip it back through the ring, and then you pull it all the way. Now how to tighten it is you grab, grab each of the loops, and then you just feed it all the way through, and then you secure it. Now for the chest plate, if my friend Dave can hold the horse. So our chest plate is like this. It's okay. Make sure that it's there. The ring right up here. Bring it through. Put it as far as your horse needs it to be. And then you're going to go under here and under on the bottom of the girth, my friend wants, there's these rings. You're going to put this clip on the first ring. And that is a perfectly well done saddle. Saddling. Ta da! Now we're going to go over our three types of bridles that we have out here, which is our Hackamore Curve and our Snaffle. This is our Hackamore bridle, and um, our horse John Wayne over there wears one, and we'll show you how to put one on him in a minute. So basically what I'm holding is the head saw, and it has two different pieces. Here is called the crown piece, and it goes right behind their ears, and then this is the cheek piece because it rests right on their cheeks. This is our nose band and our chin strap. So. You don't want to stick this part in their mouth. They'll try and stick it in their mouth sometimes if you're not putting it on correctly. So you want to make sure that their nose goes in between this area. But don't have that in their mouth. And then we just have the reins. Pretty simple bridle. So what's so special about the Hackamore is it's a bitless bridle. Unlike the curb and the snaffle, it has nothing to put in the horse's mouth. This is used for well obedient horses or horses with bad teeth. So its power comes from basically when you pull the reins back, everything moves forward. Here, hold this. When you pull the reins back, everything moves back. Do you see how everything just moves back? That's, that's basically stopping them. So it's a powerful bridle, but there's nothing in the mouth. So that is one of the wonderful things about a hackmore. There's nothing going to be in the mouth. Okay, so same thing, this is a hackamore, this is John Wayne's hackamore, the only difference between the one we just showed you is it has a loop for one of his ears. So how we put it on him, so we throw his reins over his head, and put it far back towards his saddle, and then we, took, went, we put one of our hands up here, and grab it with the crown piece, and we put it right over his nose, and then he brought his head down for me. And we're going to put that through, and then we're going to put this ear through the loop and just fix his forelock. And then he's wearing his bridle so that whenever we control him and pull back on his reins, it's going to do that and he's going to move his head. Okay, so this one is our curved bit. The difference between this one and the half more is this one is more powerful in that it actually has a bit that goes in the mouth. So with this one, it has the crown piece and the cheek piece. And it has the chin strap and the bit and the reins, but it has a brow band on it. Some of them have them and some of them don't. It's just the same thing as the earpiece that was on Wayne. So, it's more powerful because it is connected to their bit directly in their mouth, so it puts more power when you pull back on their mouth. So, so this is so the curb bit is very is a is a very very powerful bridle. So this part right here. Um, this part can actually get longer and what we, how you know that you're using it correctly is since this is such a powerful thing, you don't need to put too much pressure or pull too hard on the reins when you're trying to stop your horse. So some people even put, tie like a piece of horse hair on this part that leads to the reins and they use that to tell if they're actually pulling too hard because if you break the horse, piece of horse hair, you're just pulling too hard. 
So this this bit is just way is so powerful that you don't need to use too much force on your own on the reins when you're using the reins. So this is for horses that have a little bit of heavier head and need a little bit more of a gentler kind of tough touch. So this is our friend Deuce. This is his bridle. It's a curb bit. So same as the hackamore, you throw the reins over his head and put them all the way back. Put your hand up here. You put you grab this. Thank you. And then you slip it on in. And then you put the ears through this part. And voila! You have a horse with a curb bit. Okay, so now we have our snaffle. And we have two different types of snaffles here. We have our O-ring one, which this one is our pony bridle with an O-ring, and then we have our D-ring snaffle. So with our O-ring snaffle, snaffle, this one just has the reins, the chin strap, the bit, the cheek piece, and the crown piece with the head stall. And that's basically all that's to that one. And then with our D-ring, it has its reins and a chin strap that was added onto it. Um, the bit and its cheek piece and its head stall. So they both can have the same pieces and they both do the same thing. It's just that they have a different um, thing on the side. So, so the uh, snaffle, this one is a D-ring snaffle. The, so what happens is the difference between this and all the other bridles is it's really just directly on the bit. The reins are just connected directly on the bit so instead of pulling downward it's pulling directly on the mount. So we don't... the use of it is basically you can use it on any horse really. Some horses just find it that the pack more or the, or the carpet bit or is better to use for them but so this is like the happy medium bit. So these little things on the, on the pieces, these little rolling things, they actually do roll. This part is actually the part that goes in the horse's mouth and so a horse that gets bored, like a horse that we have out here named Forty, he will play with them while he's standing around and you can just hear it in his mouth just spurt, uh, spinning around. So this, the, the little turny things are just for horses that get bored and they have something to do with their mouth. So yeah. Okay, so this is Expresso and this is his bridle. It's a, it's a uh, snaffle. So like the curb bit and the hackamore, you start off putting the reins over his head. You put your hand up here. Thank you. You're gonna grab it. You put your hand right there. You put your thumb in his mouth if he doesn't want to open his mouth and you push down. Come on. Thank you. And then you slip his ears through both sides. <laughs> Sorry. And voila, you have a happy bridled espresso. So this is my friend Joker again where I'm going to teach go over how to put on a halter and how to hold a lead rope. So that's because you're here and I don't want you to run off. <laughs> I'm going to go on the other side of him. So obviously we can talk about how to take off it first because I already have it on. So we have this little rope and we slip it through. Sorry. <laughs> Take it off. Oh, bigger. And then how you put it on you you're standing on this side of the horse. You grab the, the halter. You, this is the nose piece. So you slip it on over. You take this longer line. You bring it on over his head. And then you have the loop. Slip the end through the loop. Bring it all the way up. And then bring it on like that, and then you tighten it. Now, when holding your lead rope, when holding your lead rope, you never ever do this because if the horse runs off because it got spooked, the whole entire line will get caught on your hand, and then you probably won't have a hand anymore. So we don't want that. So, 
gra gather it up like this. And hold it like that. Thank you. And then you never hold it up here. We will always hold it down here. Because you also never hold it up here. Just because it, you don't want your hand to get caught anywhere. That doesn't need to be caught. So you hold it like this. And you hold your other hand like this. And you always stand on the left side of the horse. And then you walk on. You look where you want to go and the horse will basically go the same way. And it's not going to be a problem. And that's how you put on a halter. And I hold a lead rope. So once you have your happy horse all tacked up, you need to walk him to a railing because sometimes the kids aren't here yet. So we walk him all the way to a railing properly holding it. Walk up to your railing and you put a little, uh, like a little loop over it. Grab the loop. Grab the rain, uh, the rope. Pull it through. Pull it through. Pull it through. Pull it through. Pull it through one more time. And you leave it like that. Do not put this through here or else you can't do a quick release. And this this is called a daisy chain or a quick release. Because the horse is panicking, all you have to do is run over and pull. And voila, he's free to leave. So, you use the daisy chain in case of emergencies. Thank you. Hey everybody, thanks for watching our video. We hope you learned a lot about the horses and enjoyed um, watching us be with the horses. Um, special thank you to David Askin for helping us film these videos. Um, be sure to check out our website for any upcoming events that uh, we have on our event calendar. If you have any questions, um, please contact customer care at customer care at girlscouts-swtx.org. Um, and